Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Warwick and you're watching Gas Tax, the channel that's here to help you figure out how to build your dream garage. And right behind me is my 2020 Ford Expedition FX4 package. But today, we're gonna be installing the three inch ready lift. So let's jump right into it. Now this is how the Ford Expedition FX4 package looks stock. I'm gonna be giving a three inch lift and then we got some bigger tires. So take a look at this before. So as you can see guys, there is a lift in my driveway. Normally this lift is right in my garage over there. But the reason I also bought this lift, this is a twin bush scissors lift, is because I can move it around. There's a simple little dolly hookup that attaches to the bottom. Very simple, it uses its own hydraulics to lift it up so I can push it outside. If you can see, this Ford Expedition is too tall to fit in the garage when on the lift, so it makes it ideal for working on the car outside. And since it's a beautiful fall day in Chicago, it makes it perfect. I have dropped off my wheels and tires at my local performance car workshop and they are going to do those. So shout out to MPC for that because you guys are the best. If you haven't seen my last series, I've just put out a seven part series, maybe eight part series of rebuilding or, or assembling my TW200, so check that out. So guys, this lift is pretty simple. Well, so I've been told we'll find out today. There's just front spaces and back spaces and you can use the current shock setup. So that shouldn't be a problem. So, whoa. Whoo, I just slipped on this water here. <laughs> Luckily I caught myself. So I am going to be starting with the front end. So let's get started. All right, so first off guys, we are going to disconnect the ABS line from all the mounting brackets so this can just hang loosely on the side. All right guys, now that the ABS line is now removed, we're going to be removing the brake line mounts from the actual frame and the knuckle. All right, now that all the lines are removed, we're gonna remove the axle nut cover and then remove the axle nut itself. All right, now that the hub nut is removed, we are going to be removing this vacuum line back here. I don't know if you can see all the way down here. So let's get that removing. You just pull right up on it. All righty, now we're gonna remove the tie rod from uh, the knuckle and then also remove the knuckle from the upper control arm. Then next off, we're gonna actually loosen but not remove the upper control on bolts just loosen them now that this is pulled away I have ratcheted strapped it so it doesn't lean and put uh, tension on the lines um, there's a little bit of tension but most of the actual tension is on the strap here so now we're gonna loosen the upper control arm just loosen them because we got to push it up out of the way and remove the shock now that the upper control arm is out of the way what we got to do is we have to support the lower control arm with the jack so I need to get a bigger spacer here then we're going to remove the strut and we're going to remove uh, the sway bar control and then loosen the lower control arm bolts but not remove them I'm not gonna lie it is not uh, that easy you're going to have to you know constantly monitor all these wires so you don't break them or stretch them but now the shock is out and I'm out of breath. I think it's gonna be a hard time to put it back in. But, let's jump into that. I put the front spacer on here using the stock hardware. Talked them down to 30 pounds. Now it's time to try finagle all of that back in there. So this is the problem I've run into, which is a given because this is how much longer it is. This is the lowest I can get the lower control arm without stretching these wires anymore. So I need about three inches. Uh, that seems like a two person job. Luckily I'm 290 pounds, so I could use a lot of weight, but God damn. All right, so now strut is back in. I have to tighten everything I loosen, put it all back together. So let's get to that. Alrighty guys, I have done both the front uh, lifts and then I've done one of the rears. So the first front took me about two hours. I am filming, so I don't know, maybe an hour, uh, 30 minutes for inconvenience of filming. This side I didn't film and it took me about 45 minutes. So that's some hope there. The first side always when any project is the hardest. So that side was 45 minutes. 
the back was about 30 minutes and that was no filming but now what I, I know what I'm doing so I think this will also be about 30 minutes so let's jump into getting this installed so we can be done with this lift hey guys so a lot less to do here on the rear firstly you gotta loosen up the brake line again so you disconnect here and then the ABS line there's these white clips in the back there's three of them you just remove those from the actual frames there and let them free then all you do is loosen all of these uh, connections here and then under you want to take this one off and you want to take that off and then the shock actually when all of this then you you take this off all the way it comes all the way down and then you can remove the shock the shock will slide out right here and that's when I'll start talking to you guys again so we can see what to do next hey guys all of that is removed now you see this is just dangling by that one uh, nut now we're gonna remove that nut drop the shock down and twist it and come back out here all right guys now that the shock is out we are going to put the spacer in here now these spaces uh basically two bolts are closer it's not uh, symmetrical here so once these go on the bolt pattern is actually completely reversed to the shock so the shock came out this way we're actually going to have to put the bolt on and now the new bolt pattern is on the other way so you're going to have to rotate the shock to stick it back in there and that's the same thing on the front so keep that in mind sometimes the bushings are lined up a bit different but that's you need to turn this and then insert it back in so i'm going to work on putting this up and finishing up this lift as i put the shock back in you just want to hand tighten just a little bit there so there is some play here now this bushing is not exactly it is a bit cocked so what i do or did is i just take a, a extension and i just twist it a bit to it line up with the swing arm all right so what i'm gonna do now is put this bolt in lift this up put this bolt in and then lift that up and put the bolt in right there all right with those rear two tightened i'm gonna tighten everything up and talk them all up all the torque specs are in the manual for this so be sure you check those out and then i'll check in with you all right guys we are done with the lift all four corners are done and it took me about five hours now if you think of five hours just minus one for filming and it's about four hours clearly I got shit all over my face but I think this is going to work out great uh, they call it a three inch lift the box says two and a half and then I took measurements from where everything is lying right now and it's about one and a half to two inches I'm really fine with that my new wheels or tires are about uh, half an inch bigger so all in all let's say we're getting about two and a half inches of lift and more ground clearance is what I needed so guys it is getting late the wheel guys are not done with my tires yet they're having some problem with them but I'll be picking them up and checking in with you in the morning which will be in three seconds all right guys and just like that we are back it is the next morning so let's check out what she looks like there you go guys what do you think about uh, five hours of work new tires obviously there's some tire grease on there I need to clean the car but there's still a couple more things to do on it let's get the tape measure out and see how it looks it is much taller all right the rear is now at 38 and a half and the front is now at 39 and a half all right guys well thanks a lot for tuning in if you like what you saw on this channel be sure to like and subscribe keep in mind i got a lot more builds coming up on this and then my jeep gladiator and then the off-road off the grid camper so until next time i'll see you then